independent sample t-test. In this session, we are going to look into how to run, interpret, and report independent sample t-test. An independent sample t-test is used when one wants to compare mean score between two different groups for one continuous variable. Now, we are going to look into some assumptions for independent sample t-test and a few appropriate scenarios in which independent sample t-test can be used. Now, here are a few examples. For instance, a teacher wants to know if there are significant differences in marks obtained in the subject business research by student of two different sections. A manager would like to know if there are differences in morale for female or and male employees. A marketer would like to know if buying behavior of people of two cities is same or different. Another example could be an educationist wants to investigate if teacher satisfaction varies between school and college teachers. Now in each of the above examples or scenarios, the data is collected on one continuous variable, marks obtained, morale, buying behavior, or teacher satisfaction. However, it is collected from two different groups, two sections in case of business research, morale, male and female, two cities, school and college. So in each of these cases, you've got one dependent variable and data is collected from two different groups on that particular dependent variable. Here are a few assumptions that one should note before running independent sample t-test. Your dependent variable should be continuous, that is, on interval or ratio scale. Your independent variable should be categorical, that is, having two groups, male or female, school or college. Independent samples or groups, that is, independence of observation. What does this mean? There is no relationship between the subject in each sample. This means that subject in the first group cannot be in included in the other group. So if there is a subject in male group, obviously that won't appear in the female group. No subject in either group can influence subjects in the other group. No group can influence the other group. Violation of this assumption will, will result in an inaccurate p-value. Now, your data should be normally distributed, approximately. Non-normal population distribution, especially those that are thick-tailed or heavily skewed, considerably reduce the power of the test. However, with moderate or large sample size, a violation of normality may still yield accurate p-values. So, even if your data is not normally distributed, but you have a, have a large sample size, you will still get, to a certain extent, accurate p-values. Now here are um, a few examples on how to report independent sample t-test. If you've got insignificant results, you can use this template. If you've got significant results, you can use this second template. Now let's run independent sample t-test. I'm going to use blue sky statistics. So the problem is, or the hypothesis is, which I'm proposing is there is a significant difference in customer loyalty and the two groups are between male and female let's go back to our blue sky statistics here is the gender make sure that you have changed it to uh, a factor variable which you can do it by a right click and make it a factor variable and it's a factor variable with two groups one and two one is for male two is for female and i'm interested in loyalty as my dependent variable now in order to run the test you have to go to analysis means and t test independent sample do not click this one click the first one t test independent samples now i'm interested in gender as my categorical variable so you put this in here single factor variable with only two levels and i'm interested in customer loyalty as my dependent variable so i'm selecting this and putting putting it in here now what are my hypothesis well i believe that group one is not equal to group two so let's say if it if you, if you know that your group one or male uh, customer loyalty is greater than female customer loyalty or male customer loyalty is less than female customer loyalty you can use the other options as well in this case i'm going to use the first option press ok now here are your results 
customer loyalty for male the, the sample size is 413 the mean is 3.93 standard deviation is this standard error of mean is this for female the sample size is 360 uh, both groups have got substantial sample size so it's a large sample uh, so even if it's not normally distributed um, I believe there won't be an issue so here is your Levine's test of equality of variance now the problem is you want to assess whether customer loyalty differs between male and female but you've got two significance or significant values significance values here this is the first one this is the second one although there is not much difference but there might be times when you are getting differences in these two values so which value should you use for this you have to come back here on Levine's test of equality of variance to see whether the variance between the two samples is the same or different now in this case this significance value is greater than 0 0.05 so this is insignificant this is insignificant which means that equal variance is assumed between the two groups and we will select the first significance value the first p-value here what if this was less than 0 0.05 so equal variance would not have been assumed between the two groups that is male and female and in that case we would have selected this lower value the results that are presented by Blue Sky Statistics are almost the same as SPSS does. So now how do you report these in your results? The mean difference, yeah, standard error difference, the lower and upper value, well there is no zero in between. So obviously it is significant. So let's put it in here, let's copy, export to Word, here it is. Now let's do the other one as well. Let's right click, export to Word. Here it is. Here is your second table. Now let's copy the first table and report our results. So here is the output. An independent sample or samples t test was conducted to compare the, so you add your criterion variable here, which was customer reality for male and female respondents there were no significant differences well let's see if we've got significant differences well equal variance was assumed and yes there were significant differences the degree of freedom is 771 and the p-value is 0 0.03 and the p-value is 0 0.03 in scores for group 1 so group 1 is male and group 2 is your female let's add the mean and standard deviations so the mean is 3.93 3.93 your standard deviation is 0.71 or 72 if you want to round it off and for female it is 3.82 and the standard deviation is 0 0.70 so in both cases it's almost the same the standard deviation but a male have got a higher customer loyalty in comparison to female the magnitude of difference in the mean so what is the magnitude of difference your mean difference is 0 0.1101 so let's put it in here and your 95% confidence interval ranges from 0 0.0093 0.210 and let's change it here as well because there were significant differences the magnitude of the differences in the means this is was significant so let's remove the other bits hence your h1 was actually supported so this is how you can report in the text now just add these values here the mean for group 1 which is male 
the sales of female, the mean is 3.93, for female 3.82, the standard deviation 0 0.71, 0 0.70, your F statistics, this is 1.5. 1.9 These are the results for Levine's test for equality of variance. The significance was 0.218 or 0.21. Now, if you select here, you will see these are the results for t test for equality of means. So let's put the results here. The T value point uh, two point one four four, which is greater than one point nine six. The degrees of freedom seven seven one. The significance two tailed was point zero three. The mean difference was zero point one one. Standard error difference. So this is how obviously just copy and paste it over there, and uh, you'll have your results. So. This is how you can report independent sample t-test. I hope the video would have helped you understand how to run, interpret and report independent sample t-test and the situations in which you can use independent sample t-test. Thank you very much.